Good morning, Falcons. This is Paula, and I'm going to show you how you can comb your existing canvas shells to do some SLO assessments. We're going to look at four ways you can do this. I call one the quiz query. We're going to look at the discussion board dive, survey search, and the rubric raid. I am not going to pretend for a moment that these are the richest or most robust SLO assessments, but they are SLO assessments, and chances are you've got a bunch of great material in your Canvas shells that you can use to do an SLO assessment, which your SLO committee would very much appreciate you doing, preferably before May 8th, but hey, we'll take them through the end of the semester. And again, not a huge deal. Don't have to be a big headache. First, let's take a quick look at the quiz query. Uh, I'll show you one that I've done. We have an SLO assessment in the public speaking class, or we have an SLO relating to uh, ethical responsibilities of a speaker. Now, we have our whole chapter two quiz deals entirely with this particular issue. So I could do a couple things. I could just look at the grade book and see how students did on the chapter two quiz. If I wanna drill down a little deeper though, I can go to the chapter two quiz in Canvas. And by the way, I can look at this semester. I can look at last fall as well. And I go down, yeah, I put jokes in my quizzes. My students love that. Uh, and I go down to quiz statistics and I get some really valuable information. Most importantly, Canvas does the math, which I really appreciate. And it tells me that the average score was 93% and I get a low score and a high score. I get to determine how an SLO is met. I'm gonna say that this SLO is met if the students got a 70% or higher on the quiz. So obviously we got some folks that might not have uh, hit that SLO. So I can look at this graph here. It doesn't give me the number breakdown, but I know from experience that it looks like one student got a 60%. So I could say, hey, I had 28 students take this quiz, 27 out of 28 got a 70% uh, or better. And I happen to know, thanks to this response right here, that 27 out of 28 is 96%. So 96% of my students met the SLO as determined by their performance on the chapter two quiz. I can also look at specific questions on the quiz. Let's say I wanted to look specifically at ethical intent. Um, and so I can go through this quiz and look for those questions with ethical intent. And here's one and hey, 27 out of 28, 96% got that one right. I know there's another one down here. Ah, ethical intentions, and I see that 82%, 23 of the 28 students got that one correct. So I could say, based on questions dealing specifically with ethical intentions, uh, we had a couple of questions about this. Students scored 82% on one question and 96% uh, on the other with an average of whatever. So this many students are meeting the SLOs for that particular class. Um, so you can look at specific questions or you can look at entire quizzes or tests. And again, Canvas does the math for you, which I deeply appreciate. So that's what a quiz query is. And again, you go to the quizzes, you click on the quiz or the test that you're looking at, and you scroll down to uh, statistics. A second way to do an SLO assessment by with an existing Canvas shell is a discussion board dive. Chances are you have a discussion board relating to an SLO in your class. Personally, most of my assignments relate to an SLO in my class. I, I do that on purpose. But anyway, uh, we have an SLO in our public speaking class about demonstrating active listening. So we have a discussion board where students watch a TED Talk. This is Elisa Shubb over at American River College. She did a powerful TED Talk on the power of public listening. So I have my students watch this and then they have to identify they have to list at least three of the powers of listeners that are discussed in the video. So I can simply, I apologize for showing some student names here. I try not to, but I can't avoid it. Uh, I can scroll through and just do a quick content analysis of, okay, this student identified three of them and this student listed three of them and so on and so forth. So you can ask a particular question in a discussion board, go through, how many students correctly did this or were, you know, this many identified three, this many identified two, however you wish to do this. 
You can also, depending on how you do your grading, just look at the grades for that discussion board. You know that if a student got full credit on the discussion board, they did what you asked them to do. Students got partial credit, no credit, etc. So looking at the discussion board itself or looking at the grades on the discussion board can inform an SLO assessment. A third way is what I call a survey search. I love doing surveys in my Canvas uh, shells. I do them early in the semester to find out, hey, is this too much work? Is this too little work? Are you digging this? Are you not digging this? Is it easy to find things? Is it not easy to find things? So it helps me structure my class and kind of dial in with my students. And I also use them um, for very specific types of things. Example, we have a couple kind of difficult to measure student learning outcomes in our intercultural class. One is, choose socially appropriate behaviors in specific intercultural situations requiring behavioral flexibility, tolerance for ambiguity, and social relaxation. And another one that says demonstrate an understanding of the basic skills for communicating with people from different cultures. So I just ask my students, hey, how's that going? And it looks like this. I go into my statistics and I ask questions. I always start with kind of low budget uh, easy questions. And as we go into it a little bit, did you find yourself having to power through or roll with some awkward exchanges? And I get some feedback there. Uh, were you nervous? Which gets to this idea of um, ambiguity. Did you get more comfortable as you spent more time together? Um, do you have more interest in the culture? And are you more likely to engage with people from other cultures? So I use the student self uh, uh, reported data basically to address those SLOs. And again, I can say, hey, 41% of my students um, said that I'm more confident and 17 were already pretty confident, but I can show that, hey, 85% of my class is more likely to engage uh, with folks from other cultures as a result of the things that they've learned in the class. So I find surveys very helpful, particularly for those difficult to measure SLOs. And if you're wondering, well, that's nice, but how the heck do I do a survey? You go to quizzes, you go to new quiz, you call it whatever you want, SLO assessment of whatever, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the big one, quiz type. If you go to graded survey, um, and you can assign no points, and it still shows up in their to-do list, which is cool. Or you can assign 5, 10, whatever you want. And students will automatically receive full credit for doing it once they take the survey. And then from then on, it's just like any other quiz. You got your due date and that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, so it's very easy to do. And I find that very, very helpful for assessing particular kinds of SLOs. Good news, if you're thinking, well, okay, that's nice. It's not too late. You can throw a survey in your class this week if you want to. Ask students to complete it. I promise you, if you throw them some extra credit, they'll do it. Um, but even if you don't want to do the extra credit, you can ask them, hey, I need your help with this. We've got to assess. Uh, so I have to assess, just like you guys have tests. I have tests too, and I need to assess how we're doing on this. So that's a way to assess as well. And then the last one I call rubric rating. It's very hard for me to show you anything without outing one of my students. So um, I'm not going to show you an actual rubric, but I use rubrics. If you don't use rubrics, highly recommend them. They make life pretty easy for you in a lot of ways. But if you do use rubrics, you can look at specific elements of rubric. For example, in our public speaking class, one of our student learning outcomes is that students can create logical outlines, you know, with that, you know, with transitions between main points and things of that nature. So a couple of ways I can do this. I can just go to grades and say, hey, how are they doing on their outlines? Are they are they getting passing grades or not? So I could do a more general assessment of that. But if I want to look at specific pieces, there's a section, there's a, a rubric item that deals specifically with logical organization of main points with transitions between those main points. So I could just go into SpeedGrader and rip through my rubric and see how many students, in my opinion, are meeting the SLO assessment. They're getting 7 out of 10 in that category or 8 out of 10 or however you choose to measure it. So once again with feeling, four ways this stuff 
probably exists already in your Canvas shells by looking at your quizzes, by looking at discussion boards, uh, looking at surveys or creating a quick survey, uh, using your rubrics if you're already using them. Those are all ways that you can very efficiently go through and make a determination in terms of how well students are meeting your SLOs. And I'm going to wind this up with this uh, PSA. Do not freak out if students are not meeting SLOs. I know we kind of take that personally or we think, oh man, I'm, I'm messing up, I'm failing. This is an informative process for us as instructors. If you find, wow, my students are just not doing well in this particular area, that's helpful. I either need to find a better book or I need to find an additional reading or I need to change the way I cover this in my class or I need to shine a spotlight on it, give it more attention. It's very helpful for me as an instructor to get this information so that I can make changes to my class and be working towards that, that constant improvement of how I'm delivering my stuff. If you have any questions or you need any help, please reach out to me. My email is haugp, H-A-U-G-P, at flc.losrios.edu. Happy to help you do this. Please feel free to reach out to any member of the SLO uh, committee. We're happy to help you. Um, and best of luck, and we really appreciate you doing this. And again, if you need any help, please reach out. Have a fabulous week, my Falcons.